Good morning and welcome to the Leeward Islands District Devotional from the Dominica Circuit under the leadership of the Reverend Dr. Keith B. Lewis. I am your presenter, Dr. Jermaine Jewel Sharpier. I now invite you to sing the song, The Way of the Cross Leads Home. <laughs> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we continue on our Lenten journey, we ask that you guide us on the path that leads to you. Fill our hearts with gratitude, patience, strength, and peace as we strive to become the best version of ourselves, sincerely and honestly admitting our shortcomings and sins. Give us rest in you. Help us to accept others, showing them your great love instead of casting judgment. Heavenly Father, may all our sacrifices during this Lenten season remind us of our dependence on you for all the blessings we enjoy. May we stand in solidarity today with all our brothers and sisters around the world who are suffering. Give us hearts hungry to serve you and those who need what we have to give. May this time of year be one of outward focus, seeking you in those we often ignore. Heavenly Father, 
Help us to live a life that is focused on freedom, generosity, and encounter. During this season, may we seek spiritual renewal and a deeper connection with you. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, cleanse our hearts, and draw us closer to your love and grace. We ask all of this with thanksgiving. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 52, verse 13, reading through to chapter 53, verse 6. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up, and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so mad was his appearance beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of mortals. He shall startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which had not been told them they shall see, and that which they had not heard they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hid their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has bore our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we were healed. All we were like sheep had gone astray, we have all turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we meditate on this portion of scripture reading, let us focus on the prophet Isaiah's account of the suffering servant. Let us also reflect on God's promise to bring salvation to the entire world through the Messiah. The suffering of Jesus Christ can be depicted most vividly in the book of Isaiah, chapter 52, verse 13 through to chapter 53. The ideal sufferer, the suffering servant. While the prophet does not identify Jesus as the sufferer, as Christian believers, we see this as the prophecy of the suffering of the Lord Jesus Christ. I cannot help but reflect on my favorite scripture, Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5, which states, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. At age 10, I was considered to be of normal height. However, by age 11, I started growing into this tall, skinny teenager. Kids would tease me, and I wanted to shrink into a normal height. I would measure my height daily, and I would cry whenever I saw that I had grown another inch or foot. Eventually, someone suggested, why not try netball or basketball? Fast forward to many years later, I was able to complete a first degree on a basketball and volleyball scholarship. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. In other words, what God has predetermined to come to pass does indeed come to pass. As seen in Isaiah's prophecy to the Israelites concerning his servant, the Messiah, Behold my servant, he will indeed prosper and succeed at what I have appointed him to do. He will be lifted up, he will be honored, and he will be exalted. 
In all of this, Isaiah declares that the servant acted voluntarily. He was a willing participant and not a victim. He poured out his life unto death. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 12. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 4. Someone who is not willing would have complained, but the servant did not do any of this. He was silent before his persecutors. He poured out his soul, life, unto death. He carried our infirmities and sorrows because he chose to. In the scripture reading, the servant sufferer is portrayed as lacking in beauty, despised by men, diseased, and of little count. Through all of this, Isaiah revealed a God actively at work in and with the servant's suffering. What did the servant sufferer do for us? He assumed our sins. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was numbered with the transgressors, yet he bore the sin of many, and he assumed the punishment for our sins. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, yet he opened not his mouth. He was stricken for the transgression of my people. Notwithstanding all of this, God declares that suffering is a part of faithful believer spiritual growth. It is for the development of our faith. In practical wisdom, Suffering can come to us, the people of God, in many forms. We think of malicious slander, being afflicted with illness, bankruptcy, and loss. But we must remember also that Jesus' suffering did not go in vain. He took on all of our sins and he suffered in our place. We are justified through his sacrifice. He redeems us. In a word, we are saved by his grace. As you reflect on this meditation for today, may the Spirit of God guide you to a deeper commitment to realize, I have been crucified with Christ, therefore I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. May God bless us on our journey. Amen. Now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenants, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before the world. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what And laid behind a stone You live to die Rejected and alone Like a rose Trampled on the ground You took the fall And thought
Above all.